my name is Julia Esposito, and this summer I worked with Dr. McCullen Sandora and Dr. Henderson Cleese um, to study the complexity of written and molecular alphabets and come up with metrics for these complexities. I also worked alongside fellow YSPs Anna, Fatima, Joika, Catherine, Suleiman, Tasneem, and Tiana. So, to start off, I just want to discuss what is character complexity and what are characters? So we worked with this one paper uh, written by Changizi Shimojo et al. And they defined writing systems as visual notation systems wherein a repertoire of marks or strokes are used to construct a set of characters. They mostly studied this complexity within writing systems by looking at things such as the average stroke length it takes to create a character and the average redundancy within characters in a writing system. And as you can see on the bottom of the slide, they used these two formulas uh, to figure out the results that they got. Um, and at the end of their study, they found that the average number of strokes it takes to create a character is three, no, uh, regardless of the size of the actual writing system. So regardless of how many characters are in a writing system, and the average redundancy was 50%, meaning if you had a character and you took out half of its strokes, you would still likely be able to identify it. So here is a table from their paper uh, where they show some examples of different scripts or writing systems that they worked with, the kind of system it was, and some metrics that they came up with for these various writing systems, including the average stroke length, the number of strokes, and the number of characters in these writing systems. Um, and I'd also like to mention that I know Anna has a short talk talking also a little bit more on these kinds of systems, so I recommend checking that out too. We want to expand on this study and others to actually get a better understanding of what makes a character more or less complex. So I would like to do a little bit of a case study right now in the chat. So I have two uh, test cases right in front of me, the one on the left and the one on the right. So first for the one on the left, um, if you don't mind just putting in chat, which of these three characters would you say is most complex and which is least complex? And I'll give you guys a couple seconds. And then once you've done that, for the four on the right, which is four different Bs that are in different fonts, which one would you say is the most and which one would you say is the least? And I can't see the chat right now, so I'll check it out after, but um, I did want to share our results from this from our group. So as a group, we decided to take a bunch of different views from different fonts and uh, show them in order from simplest to most complex. And funny enough, we did have a lot of similarities in how we viewed these bees. Um, for example, we all chose this one cursive-ish bee to be the most complex and this one very uh, uniform one stroke bee to be the least. Um, and we want to ask ourselves, okay, why did we do that? <laughs> what exactly makes these things more or less complex? So I would like to now get into our actual project. So the goal of our project was to understand whether there are these similarities between human and molecular alphabets. And we decided to do this by first looking at different characters and coming up with complexity metrics and then applying those to molecular representations. So for our steps, step one, we had to gather our data and build two-dimensional images of characters. For step two, we wanted to come up with different functions to determine script complexity on these characters. Step three, we had to build molecular representations. And step number four, actually applying script complexity metrics to molecules and then comparing those to the chemical molecular complexity metrics. So step number one, creating base code and representing these characters. So we used Unicode, which is an international encoding standard where each character has a numeric code. So when you have a font, uh, the fonts will draw these characters based on these numeric codes. Um, the only thing is not all fonts support all characters, so we did have to do a bit of working around that. 
uh, when we finished and came up with the, our final data frame of characters, we had 25,895 characters from 127 scripts and 55 fonts. And we created images for each of these characters, as you can see on this slide. So you have the letter K and the Armenian capital letter Ben. So step number two, actually figuring out how to measure complexity of characters. We had a handful of different metrics that we decided to work on. Um, and so let me just start by going through each of them. Number one, we had parametric complexity. This is just measuring how complex the perimeters of a character are. And it is given by this formula over here on the right um, and by the Pelly algorithm. Uh, next, we had pixel count. Uh, which just measure the fraction of black pixels in one of these 2D images, which can give you an idea of how much space these characters sort of take up. Number three, we had the number of components for each of these characters. Um, to put it very simply, an A is just one component, all the strokes are connected, whereas an I is two components. It sort of has a split in the middle. And we used a DB scan algorithm to sort of cluster these different uh, points and figure this out. Number four, we use this distance transform on these 2D images. What distance transform does is for each pixel, it counts how far away that pixel is from the nearest edge. And this sort of thing can be used to understand possibly how thick a different character is and how that thickness can vary throughout the character, which could be used to measure complexity of these characters. So number five, the compression size. In this one, we just compressed these images into zip files and figured out how big is that file. Number six, symmetry. Um, this is one that I worked a lot on. Uh, we just take an image, flip it, and then count the difference between these two images to come up with a complexity metric. And finally, number seven, VAE, or variational autoencoders. Um, we used this. Um, by giving it an image, it would turn this image into a 64 length array, so a much simpler um, base, and it would try to recreate the image again. And so, for example, in this image reconstruction part, you can see that a simpler character is much easier to recreate than a more complex character. And also, I'd like to note, definitely check out the short talks for this, because I know each of the other members of the group go more into detail about their specific metrics that they worked on. So. Step three, molecular representation. After we were able to come up with all these script complexity metrics to apply to characters, we wanted to find an analog for molecules. So we made this code or we used RDKit, which is a specific package um, that can take the smiles representation for molecules and it will spit out this image, um, a 2D image. And we wanted this so that we could just essentially apply the script complexity metrics we came up with to these images of molecules. But that's not all we want to do. We also want to compare two uh, molecular uh, complexity metrics. And so we use this other Python program called Mordred. So Mordred can actually calculate a ton and a ton of molecular complexity metrics for these molecules that depend on the chemistry of the molecules. So for example, um, some of the descriptors in Mordred are things like atom counts, the Rambic index, um, the eccentric eccentric conductivity index and many others. So once we had this list of different molecular complexity metrics for an amino acid and a list of different script complexity metrics, we could go ahead and actually compare them. So we used a principal component analysis for all the different script complexity metrics. And we did that also for the molecular complexity metrics to come up with the graph that you're seeing on the right. Um, and so we took a bunch of different amino acids and their smiles representations and calculated these values for script complexity and molecular complexity. So the starred ones are biotic amino acids. All the blue points are just non-biotic amino acids. And from here, we're hoping to work more on this and come up with more complexity metrics to work with and do more comparisons. So super excited to see how things go. And I definitely recommend checking out other talks. Um, and yeah, does anyone have any questions? That was really cool. Um, yeah, any, anyone, so you can ask questions in the chat or you can raise your hand and I can call on you to ask questions. I see Sanjoy has a question already. Hey, Julia, wow. 
fuck, it blew my mind. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, I was wondering if you take a scoop of water from like a hot spring versus a scoop of water from an environment where there is no life whatsoever, could the distribution of complexity of the molecules be a biosignature sometimes? I could see that being a possibility. Um, I know we haven't gotten that far yet just because um, we're still working on just comparing the molecular versus script complexity. Um, but I could see that being a possibility there, yeah. Um, I think it is hard because complexity is so subjective too and, and even our metrics need to be perfected in some ways, so yeah. Awesome, awesome presentation, thank you. Yeah. Ayush, I see your hand up. Um, uh, great talk, uh, Julia. Um, I would like to um, ask two questions. One was about um, the use of a variational autoencoder that you showed. Mm -hmm. um, can you go back to that? Um, I remember you said that, so um, you feed in um, the script and the, the image and want the VAE to reconstruct that. Um, how exactly are you using that? Yeah, so the way that we're using that is we're using the reconstruction error value mm -hmm. to um, create a complexity metric based on that. So when we're actually coming up with all these metrics, most of them are going to be some fractions, like some value between zero and one. And so, for example, we can use the reconstruction error. And so things that might have um, things that are harder to reconstruct, we would consider to be more complex. But I have um, uh, one question though about this because um, in in a VAE it will like which um, scripts or which letters are uh, easy to reconstruct would sort of depend on uh, the architecture, right? Um, for instance, um, when you have a neural net, whether or not you add a convolutional layers or not, uh, will affect whether this. Um, rotational invariance or like what kind of um, structures can be uh, picked up uh, sort of depend on those. So do we have um, um, Yeah, I, I see what you're saying there, yeah. Um, I don't know the exact architecture of the VAE that was used. Um, it wasn't mm -hmm. like the one thing that I worked the most on. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I totally see how that could be an area for like more research with these characters to see the sort of variations we get in the reconstruction error, depending on that. Yeah. And in the PCA, what, uh, you, you, you said you plotted um, the script complexity versus the molecular complexity? Yes. So the difference between the script and the molecular is that the script complexity were these metrics that we came up with based on characters. So they were initially mm -hmm. metrics that we kind of made that was catering towards these characters. Mm -hmm. um, so things like the pixel count for characters, the number of strokes for characters, things like that. Whereas the molecular complexity, that arises directly from this uh, Python um, program, Mordred, which actually just uh, calculates a bunch of different molecular or chemistry-based descriptors for these same molecules, so. So you have um, uh, so the things that you do to the images is on the y-axis and uh, the molecular yes. descriptors are on, are on the x-axis. Um, that that is uh, I, I I see uh, why that makes sense. Um, thank you for the explanation. Uh, I wonder whether uh, PCA uh, Ayush, can I yes, some, but in for a moment, can we take some of the, the longer questions? Maybe over to the the chat in the Blue Icon channel on Slack. Um, there are two more questions in the chat right now. I think we have time maybe for one of them. Um, so the first one came in from Gab Rizzo. It said, uh, awesome talk. In step two, you mentioned determining pixel count. Do you have to account for the fonts that you use for pixel counts? Because a character can arguably have a higher pixel count depending on the font, right? Yes. So that is actually something we were just discussing, how we want to try to compare also the complexity metrics between different fonts. We just haven't gotten to doing that yet. Um, but that's definitely an area for like future research. So, yeah.